All right, guys, before we get into the video, I want to clarify some things and talk a little bit about Plum Quick. The last AC conversion video I did, I told everyone I got my kit from Plum Quick. I still had questions that said, um, Plum Quick does not build the Navita systems. Why are you advertising for Plum Quick? That's a great question. Plum Quick is actually a retailer. That's number one. Number two, Navitas has IMAP pricing. Basically, it states on Google, the IMAP pricing basically requires a retailer to display a minimum advertised price despite the actual selling price. So in short, this is a control on the advertised price, but not the actual price of the product. This is great. So you see the Navitas is not uh, Plum Quick's bread and butter. The DC motors are Plum Quick's bread and butter. However, if you want the best price in the game, go ahead and get your price quote from any other dealer on Facebook, on Instagram, on Snapchat, on TikTok, anywhere you can get it. Take a screenshot, send it over to Robbie Steen at Plum Quick, and he's gonna not only match it, but he'll beat it, and he'll give you free shipping from coast to coast. That's why I choose Robbie Steen with Plum Quick over any other dealer, because I'm guaranteed the lowest price since this isn't his bread and butter. So my buddy has an EasyGo TXT and he decided to do the AC conversion on it and we're gonna do that in this video today. Now he got his AC kit and everything all through Plum Quick Racing. You can go to plumquick.com and check it out. Let's open up this box here. So it's packaged very well. We're gonna get all these end caps out of here. We've got the invoice here. We've got some instructions. We also have some of the EasyGo, um, the Kraken, the best of the AC Motors kit decals for the golf cart, if he wants to install those. Also went with the two gauge kit here. This is the Curtis Albright solenoid. It's 36 or 48 volts. This is a SW180. We're gonna be installing this on the golf cart as well. You have some mounts for the solenoid that are wrapped up inside the packaging. So don't just throw the packaging away without getting your mounts. Now let's check out the motor. This is very heavy. It's about 70 to 75 pounds. Let's go ahead and check it out. Sealed up very nicely. As you can tell here, uh, the box has got a lot of packing in it. And we're wrapped up inside of another box here. And once you get to this box, you're gonna have a couple things. These are going to be mounting bolts here. Now these are going to be eyelet support hooks. You have three boots for the AC motor. One side is split open, one side is not. Next, let's look at the motor itself. It's wrapped up here very nicely. And the last box for the kit here, let's open it up. So in this last box here, you have your AC motor controller by Navitas. And below it is another box. Once we open this box here, this is gonna have one more battery cable in here. Actually, this is gonna go from the controller to the motor itself. We're going to have a harness for the Navitas controller. We're gonna have some hardware for mounting. This is gonna be the on the fly dash remote control. And this is gonna be your TXT mounting plate for your golf cart. First thing we need to do is put on the cart brake, turn the golf cart in the off position. Next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove the seat. Once we have the seat removed, we wanna put the tow run switch in the tow position. Next, we're gonna remove the positive and negative battery cable away from the battery pack. Next, we're going to need to remove the cover from the factory controller. It's going to take a 10 millimeter socket. It's going to be one at the top right, one at the top left, one at the bottom right, 
one at the bottom left. Now once you have all four bolts removed, the cover is going to come off. Inside the cover is going to be a male and female connector. The connector is going to go to the underside of the cover. On the outside of the cover, you're going to have this tow run switch. We're going to need to remove it and save it for later on the install. Now in order to remove the controller, it's going to take a 10 millimeter socket to remove that bolt there. We're also going to need to remove these plugs. There's a bolt holding it underneath the bottom side of the controller as well. Once everything disconnected here, we can now pull the controller up. Once we get all of the plugs removed, you can have three big cables to remove. I'm using a 13 millimeter socket to remove those away from the controller. The very next thing we need to do in order to mount the new controller, we need to mount the adapter plate here. And as you can tell, one side all the holes are beveled, the other side there isn't. This side is gonna be up, this side is gonna be down. Okay, next thing, we got a hole in the center top here and two outside holes. The hole in the center top is gonna to go to this right here hole. Once you line this hole up with this hole here, these two holes for the bottom of the controller will line up with these holes right here. That hole's lined up and these two bottom holes are as well. We already got the mounting adapter lined up and one of the bolts in place here. We need to line up these two bottom screw holes here. The adapter plate is now mounted. So in the instructions, it says to mount the controller to the base like this. However, I'm gonna do it a little bit different and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna reverse the controller and mount it in like this. And the reason I'm doing it is I don't want these connectors here close to the side of the golf cart seat base so water can drip down on them. I want them a little bit farther in. We're using an eight millimeter socket. Now on this top bracket, we're going to place the switch bracket here. Mount it just like that right there. The controller is now mounted. Now we're going to take the switch, put it into the supplied mounting bracket, and twist on the mounting nut. Now the switch is installed. Now before we go any further on the controller, I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these stock battery cables and replace them with the new two gauge battery cables from Plum Quick. Now on this cover here to remove the solenoid, it's got one screw slash bolt. It's gonna take a 10 millimeter socket to remove it. Once we have that loose, we can go ahead and remove this cover here. So this is your factor solenoid here. You have your input here, you have your output here. The green wire from the battery wraps around to the input of the solenoid. The output of the solenoid goes to the controller. Now here's a contact connector here and a contact connector here. This is for the activation circuit. We're gonna replace all four of these with the new one. However, once we replace the solenoid, we're not gonna use this resistor here that's connected to the big terminals. As you can tell, we have a power wire going from the positive side that is not yet hooked up. It's going down straight into the top of the new solenoid. The new solenoid wire on the other side is going up to the positive side there, of the controller. We went ahead and mounted the solenoid in the stock location, used the two wires going into the solenoid from the old one, put some new terminals in on them, and plugged them in place. What's left to do is just to hook the power wire up to the power positive on the battery pack. Now we're waiting to do this until after everything is completed. On the EasyGo TXT, we aren't going to use the R of the controller. Next, we need to go ahead and mount the B negative to the B negative of the battery pack. The next thing we need to do is replace the motor. 
In order to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and jack the rear end up and place it on jack stands. Since we're replacing the motor and the motor cables, we do not need to disconnect the factory motor cables away from the factory motor. We need to go ahead and grab them, pull them out here. We need to remove the three 7 16 bolts that hold the motor into place. Once we have those removed, we can slide the factory motor away from the transaxle. Now in order to prep the new motor for the golf cart now, we need to go ahead and install the supplied cable that comes with the kit, along with the two other cables that comes with the Plum Quick 2 gauge kit. We're also gonna be installing these ends that goes onto these right here, terminal posts here, along with the cables. Now what we're gonna do here is replace this, Now we're gonna take this cable here, run it through this boot, Stick it on here, replace the washer and the lock washer and the supplied nut. Now once we have all three of these tightened down, we'll go ahead and slide these boots over these terminals and wrap them around the other side of the wires here. That gives us a great protection between anything that might come up and hit these or the wires themselves. Once we have them tightened down, we're gonna go ahead and slide the boots over all of them. Some guys like to slide wire ties over the ends of these boots here to make sure they stay on. Now that we have all three cables installed, we need to go ahead and manhandle the motor, slide it back onto the axle shaft of the rear end, and bolt it in all place. Right, so remember on the motor, white was W, black was V, red was U. We're gonna continue that, color code those straight to the controller as well. Next up, we need to take the switch with this harness here and plug it back into the factory harness here. Now on the factory harness, we're not gonna use this plug, but we're gonna use this plug here to attach to the controller. Next up, we need to plug this cable into the controller and these two ends here into the motor. Remember, one of them's gonna be a temperature sensor, one's gonna be a speed sensor. Now we removed this cup holder here and we actually put a notch into the cup holder here. We did that so once we put the cup holder back in, the wire will scoot down behind the cup holder itself. We're gonna take all the excess wire, uh, wrap it in a circle and put a wire tie on it, slide it behind the cup holder, reinstall the cup holder, make it a nice clean look. Once you get all the main uh, heavy gauge wires installed, next we need to go ahead and install the wiring harness. We're gonna use this big plug here. It's gonna plug directly into the controller itself, like so. We're also gonna have two more connectors here. We're gonna have a male and we're gonna have a female. We're only gonna be using the one with the two red wires. This is gonna go to the switch for the tow run switch. This wire here went to the little diagnostic port that was there for the factory controller. We're not gonna use this one here at all. Once you go ahead and get the on the fly on the dash, we need to go ahead and plug that in as well. One more wire that we need to plug in, and that is going to be for your speed sensor and for your temperature sensor on the motor itself. And we go ahead and run that as well and plug it in. We're pretty much finished the install. Next, we'll go ahead and tighten some of these wires up. Once you have everything installed and wired up properly, next, let's go ahead and turn the golf cart to the on position. As you can see, we have power from the voltmeter. Now, once you have everything installed, go ahead and open your Navitas app. This is the dealer app, and go ahead and click on the model of your controller. Once you have the model of your controller clicked, it is gonna to come to your dashboard here. Next, we need to go over to the settings tab and we need to change the tire diameter from 18 to 23. That's because this golf cart is lifted with a six inch lift and 23 inch tires. Once we have that, click okay, hit save and yes. Now we have to turn the golf cart off and back on in order for that setting to be saved. The same goes with these next settings as well. 
We changed the Ford miles per hour speed limit from 24.99 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour as well. Now we did have to accept here. And once we hit accept, go all the way down to the very bottom of the screen and hit save, hit yes, turn the golf cart off, turn the golf cart back on, and the setting is also saved. <laughs>